followers of a leader, especially if it's a charismatic leader, there is this tendency that we want to protect him. We want to ensure that he is defended in different ways, which is something good. And yet, we have to be very careful that sometimes we can be overly protective of a leader to the extent that we can become very possessive and exclusive with respect to others. But sometimes this situation can also come about because of the leader himself. Some leaders also are very insecure. They want to bring people to themselves. They're more concerned about their own popularity, their own acceptance by the people. And so some leaders also promote the kind of divisive spirit, comparing themselves with other leaders, putting other leaders down so that they can feel uplifted. So the danger and temptation comes from both sides. It can come from the followers of this charismatic leader and the charismatic leader himself encouraging such an attitude. And I think it's very important for all of us, we must never forget the reason why we are devoted to a leader, the reason why you support a leader, is because this leader must serve the mission and the gospel of Christ. Anything that you do for a leader cannot be just for himself, cannot be to satisfy his insecurity. When you start pampering the leader, the leader becomes weak. The leader can forget his mission. And so the greatest thing you can do for your leader is to make sure that he brings more people to Christ, not to himself. So the success of your contribution to the collaboration with the leader is not being measured in terms of how much you care for him, but how much you empower him to bring more people to Jesus. And your joy must be like that of John the Baptist. I must decrease so that he can increase. So if you truly love the leader, you will decrease so that the leader will be able to truly embrace everyone. Of course, this also requires the leader to be very focused and not to lose perspective. The leader must be clear of what he is called to do. So, being focused on the mission, that is the first way. So, if everyone is focused on the larger picture, the big mission, we will be less petty over other things. So, whatever you do, whatever I do as a leader, I must ask, does it serve the mission? Does it help to proclaim the gospel? If it does not, then even the good things we do becomes detrimental to the mission. Good things can become the way in which the devil used them to destroy our mission and lose focus. That's the first thing, keeping mission in perspective. Secondly, we are all collaborators. We have different parts, with different responsibilities. There is nothing to be envious. There is nothing to compete. Just do your part and God will bless you. Because we are doing a teamwork. This mission cannot be accomplished just by one person alone. I told you the cardinal is useless if the people do not collaborate, if the people do not help him to achieve the mission. I can't do everything. Without you supporting me, I mean, it's just impossible because there are too many things to attend to. A leader in reaching out to others must be always very inclusive. For me as a bishop, I attend to the people in my office, I also attend to people outside, I attend people beyond us, even other religions, the government as well, because that is what a leader is called to do. Inclusive, in the way we relate to others, because everybody needs the service of the leader. Everybody needs the love of the leader. But no one can ever claim the leader for his or her own organization. That is sectarianism. And we too we must examine ourselves. We must ask the Lord to open our hearts. And we must ask the Lord always to remember why He has chosen us. 
So if you just do what the Lord has called you to do, in the first place, He has chosen us as His own for the service of the people of God. Let us pray that, you know, the mission of the church must be accomplished. And let us give our whole heart and soul, priests, lay people, everyone of us, always thinking, how can we expand the mission bigger, larger? Whatever it is, let us be careful that we do not fall into sectarianism, to be inward-looking, or into a little conclave that we build for ourselves. That is divisive. And for me, as bishop, as a gardener, my greatest joy is to see that we are all Catholics. We are one family of God, and that we care for each other, and that we love for each other, and that we see each other, not as competitors, but really as people working for the extension of God's reign on earth.